Hello to all you Fire Alarm and Siren fans on YouTube, it is FS Thunderbolt Fan 1000 here with another Siren update. Kind of a long due update, kind of been busy with work. This is my other work. In the Siren business, things are starting to heat up again. As you guys have known, we have a couple new additions to the, not collection, but I guess you could call inventory here. Uh, we got three Federal Signal 2001s here. We have another one that's taken apart, undergoing restoration. This is a newer one. This is an older one, and that's an even older one. I took the cone off to make sure that motor was good yet. A uh, couple transformer rectifiers. I got three of them here. This one I'm standing on has been indoors all its life, so probably never seen one like that before. You look inside here, you got your main hookup. And up there is your diode bridge that rectifies the AC to DC. So incoming power comes in 220 volts uh, single phase goes to the transformer rectifier rectifies it down to roughly around 48 volts AC and then it goes to that diode bridge that converts it to DC and then out to the uh, either FC TBD well DC FC TBD for if it's a battery backup AC DC siren or the 2001 AC contactor box a uh, couple of the 2001s here I've been working on over here is the P15. Man, I recalled seeing this one in my video. Someone commented, where is that siren at now? Well, here it is. I'm guessing he was up in the area driving around Sturgeon Bay and couldn't find it. Uh, Evanston Thunderbolt Horn, Horseman Sun Thunderbolt Horn. Uh, one of the, we got an Allotronic AR1600. That one's just a shell. And then we have the complete AR1600 over there, the yellow boy. Sterling M5 still chilling over there. 500 motor, exactly where I left it. Uh, electronic controls, Thunderbolt blower, uh, Horseman Thunderbolt head, and uh, the 500 horn, which is acting kind of as my scrapping right now. We've been scrapping some aluminum, not aluminum, but copper out of a lot of this wire that we've been having lying around. Uh, P15 doghouse. This is a P15. Not sure if you can see on this tag here, but... Uh, let me look for it. It should say horsepower somewhere here. All right, here. 15 horsepower. So, yeah, 15 horsepower, single phase. You'll never probably ever see a cleaner ACA logo than this. This is original. I didn't put it on here. The controls were inside all its life. But uh, I still managed to get some rust up in there. I don't know what's made that siren do what it did. I'm guessing the star capacitors were rapidly dropping in and out, causing it to kind of have that warbling pitch because the star capacitors will only allow it to get up to such a certain pitch before the run capacitors have to drop out. I mean, the star capacitors have to drop out and then it starts the run capacitors and such. Got a little bit of a sliver. But, uh, but yeah, so that might be why I did that. Seems like the shaft is kind of bent. Sprayed a ton of penetrating oil in there to try and get this junction box off. I'm gonna try and uh, pull this whole kind of turntable off. It is a little bent there, but I'm gonna try and straighten it out. But pull this whole turntable off and see what type of damage it is, if it's repairable, or if I'm gonna need to seek out a replacement turntable for it. Siren motor's fine, doesn't sell, smell smoky at all. You can kind of see in there, it looks like the insulation is still good and everything on it. it looks pretty new. Lovejoy coupling, 61 gear trans, gear reducer. I think these gear reducers, if I recall correctly, were made in, yeah, Union Grove, Wisconsin. Union Grove, home of the GCS Model 3 and the 2001 Roundback DC. Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, here is a Warfield 2001 motor. This one will be getting sent out to be undercut, cleaned up, and whatnot eventually. All these 2001s and Sturgeon Bay Sirens, we sold the Century to, believe it or not, believe it or not, a guy in Germany. So that Siren's now in Germany, hanging out with some E57s and whatnot. But yeah, so these are the 2001s. We're refurbing them. Uh, hopefully these will go to municipalities that cannot afford a new Siren. So we offer them with the standard 2001 AC with the uh, transformer rectifier 
or you can upgrade to battery backup controls too if they want and such so yeah that's kind of some of that with that so if you guys know any municipalities that are looking for them we have some available for pretty decent price uh, spare 100 amp contactors whenever we redo the controls on these we pull the 100 amp contactor out because it's kind of a waste of a contactor we keep them for spares just in case one on one of the units in service blows and we have a spare for it we always throw in a little smaller contactor for the rotator because it doesn't pull 100 amps here's one of the FC's from Sturgeon Bay kind of got a little smoky in there blue if think that's a capacitor or something or a diode looks kind of capacitor to me blew that and blew the MOV down here so we're gonna get those replacement parts in I'll solder them in and see if I can get it working again if not not a huge loss we have a couple of these FC's up here we have an FC plus I believe the company that sold these to them act not either whether it was accidental or intentional sold them two AFC's Normally on a 2 AFC, these, these are the, right here, these are the dip switches that indicate site address on these. Normally when you program a 2 AFC, it's going to be programmed mainly in commander from the main computer, and then all site loading is transmitted over the radio frequency that it's going to be on and loaded into the FC. But, uh, but I'm pretty sure you might be able to use FPS where I've heard some horror stories of people trying to work on and reprogram a 2AFC using FPSware and ended up bricking it because the firmware is a little different. This is, I also have a 2A or like whatever you want to call it, a 2AFC on the 2001. The reason why I think it's a 2AFC, like I said, these dip switches on a single one-way FC will have like a hot glue over them so you can't adjust them. And then two up here, these are your diagnostic LEDs. You might be able to see them there. Might be able to try and zoom in on them. But yeah, rotation, intrusion, power, AC fail, low battery, charger. Those are all on on my FC, so I've never seen them on a single a single AFC on before. But yeah, that is pretty much it with these and what's around here. Don't really have a whole lot more to say. Got a couple blown federal signal drivers down there. I think total I had four blown on that electronic, so I'm going to have to get four more drivers eventually. That's pretty much it for this update, guys. Be prepared for a larger update as we celebrate 10 years on YouTube. I've come a long way from my earlier videos, so feel free to go back, way back in the YouTube archive and check out some of the history of my journey with sirens and how I've gotten to be where I am now, you know, long ways, long ways away from building cardboard thunderbolts just the way most siren kitties start out to working on the big ones. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and stay safe.